Hey everybody, it's Julie, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World. This is Floss Tube number 65. Today is Thursday, August 20th, and like usual, I've got a lot to show you, and I have uh, quite a bit of haul. I just got back from my local needlework store, my LNS, um, so I will show you guys what I got. Um, from there, maybe we'll just dive into that. But before I do that, I just wanted to very quickly um, just tell you guys about um, a little initiative that's going on right now in our community. Um, Diana, it is Kismet Stitches, and Michelle Bendy Stitchy are uh, doing this thing on Instagram where um, they're fulfilling teachers from around the country, the country being the United States where most of my viewers are, but I guess not all of them. Um, anyway, they're, um, they're putting up teacher wish lists and you, um, I believe it's through, I believe it's on Amazon, but you go, um, you can go to the teacher's wish list and then you can actually like gift things off of the list, um, to teachers across the country. So, I will link that below, but um, Michelle Bendy Stitchy has the link on her Instagram profile. So I will put a link below if you would like to go check that out and consider helping um, if you're able. So. so like I said, I just went to my local needlework store. It's the first time I have been since pre-shutdown, um, since March. And... Um, I, I personally like have tried to avoid going into stores period. Like I, I order, uh, we do like grocery pickup where they bring it to the car. We order things online. Um, I have really not been s stepping foot in a store in a long time. Um, but I needed to go <laughs> because I needed to see some things in person um, some floss for designs that I really needed to see. Um, and so my local needle workshop, my LNS is a stitching shop and it's in Denver. It's, it's technically like in a, a suburb of Denver called Lakewood. So if you were to look it up, it would say Lakewood, Colorado, but it's basically Western Denver. Um, and they are open by appointment only. Um, she is not doing walk-ins. You have to have an appointment. Um, that, you know, you have to wear your mask. Um, there's like one person allowed in the store at a time. Like she's being very, very, very cautious. So, um, I, I went and got some stuff today. <laughs> I treated myself. Um, so what did I get? Well, <laughs> um, I had ordered this chart at market. I had pre-ordered this and, um, then was just not able to go pick it up until now. So this is Blackbird Designs Little Birds. Um, I wanted to point out, so here in the, what do you call this, the cartouche? Um, it says Alma M. Allen, who's one of the designers, Barb and, uh, Barb and Alma are the designers of Blackbird Designs um, from Kansas City originally. Um, and anyway, it says Alma M. Allen, and then it says Lakewood, Colorado, August 8th, 2019. So remember I just told you this, this LNS, the stitching shop is located in Lakewood, Colorado. <laughs> so I was like, um, did they like design this in, in tribute um, for, for our LNS. Uh, no, apparently Alma has some connections to the area. Um, I, I don't want to like share her personal business, but apparently she is occasionally in this area. So um, maybe one day I'll be at a stitching shop and I will run into Alma. Like, that would be pretty cool. I'm like crossing my fingers. It's going to happen. So, um, anyway, so that was like the last blackbird that I needed still from market. Cause you know, you got to buy all the blackbirds. It's a law. Um, so I got some floss. Um, 
I needed, I needed some for some upcoming designs and I needed some for a project. So, um, I got a couple of weeks, a couple of general arts and a couple of, or one classic color works. So just some pretty flosses. Um, they're flosses. What, what more is there to say? Okay. And then the big, the big purchase today. Okay. So, um, backstory. I am doing a Mill Hill Halloween village and I'm, it's, I was inspired um, by Stephanie, Miss Oh So Crafty, who did a Mill Hill, ha uh, not Halloween, she did a Mill Hill Christmas village where I think it was nine, it might have been more, but she took all of the Mill Hill buttons and beads, like the bigger Mill Hill, um, and she took all of like the Christmas ones and made this beautiful Christmas village. And I decided I'm doing that with Halloween. Um, although I don't, there aren't as many options, um, for haunted buildings, um, from Mill Hill. I was really hoping actually they were going to release some more this year. Um, so it wasn't too long ago, maybe a month ago, they released all of their like Halloween, fall, autumn themed, um, new kits and really cute ones, some really good ones, but none of them were buildings that I could use for, for this piece. So it is what it is. So, um, I dyed this fabric myself and, um, I have completed the haunted library. There are going to be nine of these overall. I'll insert a picture here now that I know how to do that. <laughs> so, um, that's just a, a mock-up of the nine that I came up with to make my village with, I love the witch in the middle, um, flying over the village. So anyway, so I've done the library and I have the opera house up next, like ready to go. Right. And then I thought I'll just buy the rest. Like whenever I'll just buy them when I buy them. <laughs> well, I, something made me look the other day. I really don't even remember why, but a couple of days ago, um, I, I went to look at the kits and they are out of stock everywhere. Like they're just, they're not they're. I mean, I'm sure if I set an eBay alert or like really dug, I could find them. I I'm not saying they're like impossible to get, but they're not like readily in stock. And so I kind of panicked. So I was, <laughs> I was like, Oh, Oh gosh, I need to buy these now. I, I knew it would be, you know, these buttons and beads kits are retail like around $15. So I didn't want to buy all nine of them at once because that would be really expensive. But, um, I realized like I need to grab these while I, I can get them before I can't get them for some reason. So I knew that my LNS had at least some of them because I remember seeing them there. So, um, but I haven't been there in a long time. So I was like, you know what? I'm going to see what they have. And, um, if, if they have the ones I need, I'm getting them. I'm not going to buy one or two. I'm just going to get all that I can. Well, she had all of them, but one. So I now have, um, wait, am I doing my math right? I have seven here. Hi. I feel like I'm going crazy. Oh, okay. I might have to edit that out because that was awkward. Okay. I have six here. I have stitched one and I own the other. So I'm missing one, one of the nine, but she had almost, she had all of them, but one. So I went ahead and grabbed them. So, um, I went a little Mill Hill crazy today. <laughs> so, um, this is going in the center. This is which way? Um, and then I got Haunted Hotel. Haunted Mansion. Haunted Laboratory. 
So those are all ones I'm really happy with. And then the remaining three um, are ones that I'm kind of settling for. These are the ones where I, I'm like, I'm hoping Mill Hill might come out with a, you know, like, can we have like a haunted coffee shop or something? Like that would be great. I'm just, I'm still, I'm still holding out hope um, that they'll maybe release another building or two that I might like better than these. But these will do if, if that's all I have. So, um, Ghost Town. There's nothing wrong with this. I just like the look of like a solitary building instead of a, you know, I don't know. I kind of look at these as like, maybe these are like apartment buildings. <laughs> and then Midnight Farm, I actually really like, but, um, it's not, I mean, it's a farm. So I think of it as like on the outskirts. So that's why I placed it in the bottom right because it's like you're heading out of town, I guess. And you hit the Midnight Farm. So, um, and then I'm, there's one other, the one I'm missing is also not my favorite. So maybe by the time I get to that bottom row, maybe Mill Hill will like have come up with another one, a, a new one. That would be great. Um, I also grabbed, I forgot to grab the, um, the other two that go with this series. Um, but I grabbed Wanda's Witchery because I'm going to do a little triptych of three of these in a row um, that are in this series, but they're over there, so sorry. Okay, so yeah, buy all the Mill Hill, <laughs> buy all the Mill Hill button and beads. Um, I, I do really love, love, love these Mill Hill kits because they have literally everything you need. Now, I'm stitching mine on fabric, um, so I will throw out the perforated paper, but these are just so great for travel. Like you literally can just grab it and go. It's got the needle, it's got the floss, it's got the beads, it's got the, the paper. Um, it's got everything right there. And I also love these for travel because you don't need to bring a Q-snap or a hoop or anything like because you the perforated paper is firm and you can just stitch right on the paper in hand. Um, obviously for the Halloween series, since I'm doing it on linen, these aren't grab and, and go travel projects for me. But um, in general, I think Mill Hills are great travel, travel things. Um, and also they're really super affordable when you think about literally everything you need for it being right there. Um, the buttons and beads run about 15, but the Mill Hill ornaments run more like eight or $9. So, and it includes everything you need to like complete the project. So that's pretty cool. Okay. So that was my haul from my LNS. Um, while I was down that way. I stopped at the um, craft thrift store. So I have talked about this before on my channel. I really shouldn't have told you guys about it because I swear like now like you guys have gone and like bought all the stuff before I can get to it. Um, but I still I still found stuff like I find stuff every time I go but um, I don't know I'm always like was there something that I missed out because someone else got it before I could maybe. Um, so it's called the craft box and it is a thrift store that is only craft supplies basically. So, um, you go in and there's, um, a cross stitch section. There's a like knitting and crochet section. There's a quilting and sewing section. There's stamping, scrapbooking, um, just all the crafts tons of fabric. They have an awesome fabric selection and their prices are amazing. So, um, it's fun to go there when I'm looking for, um, quilting, like stuff for quilting. Um, so what did I get today? <laughs> I got this small square tray. It's actually a really nice quality. Um, it's a wood tray that you put your cross stitch in. And I think it's just like really cute and will 
I'll eventually stitch something that will fit in there wonderfully. Actually, my salty sampler would have fit in here perfectly if I had had this at the time. Um, I grabbed a couple of pieces of fabric, um, just things that they just caught my eye. Um, I thought this fabric could be super cute as like the back of a, a pillow, a small pillow or a pin cushion. Um, just some nice homespun for finishing. I didn't have any quilting projects in mind, so I just bought like some fabric that caught my eye. Um, I thought this, this is a half yard cut. I thought this could be cool as like a lining for a project bag maybe. Could also be good as a finishing, like a back of a pillow. Um, this I just thought was cute and I think it would be a really cute project bag. I don't actually know how to make project bags, but you know, it's a, it's something I aspire to. Um, and I thought this fabric could be kind of adorable. Just some Halloween fabric, just some cutes, cutes. And then this is just a random piece of fabric that I thought was cool too. Um, it's got these, it's like kind of primitive. It has these like crows. Um, down here at the bottom there is, um, there's some houses. I don't know. I occasionally find like some treasure fabric. Um, I haven't found blackbird yet, uh, blackbird fabric, but um, I found um, some Santoro Gorgeous fabric. Um, and I found like, I don't know, I found some good stuff there. But with fabric, I have no idea. I would have no idea if something was like really coveted or hard to find. Um, like I've never found tulip pink there. Okay, so then I got some cross stitch patterns. So, um, they didn't have any much new there from like last time I was there. Um, I think these were there before and I passed them over, but maybe they were new. I don't know. Sometimes I need to see something a couple times before it like needs to come home with me. Um, so I got this Bright Needle Little Houses sampler because I thought it was really cute. I got the sampler works Dimin diminutive spot sampler. So the really fun thing about the craft box is you can find some really old stuff uh, there sometimes. And that's, that's just fun because you know, like, I mean, some people who've been cross stitching forever might be like, you know what? I remember that chart. Um, but in general, like you're definitely not going to be stitching what everybody else is stitching because it's going to be like older stuff most of the time. Um, I grabbed this Shepherd's Bush haunt, house haunting. I just thought it was really cute. I'm generally, I'm not into Shepherd's Bush, but a few of them do, like a few of them call to me, but Mostly I'm like, oh, pretty, but like just not quite my style. Okay, so then, oh, wait, let me show you this one last thing before I show you the main event. Um, I grabbed this Dimensions Gold Collection Petite because I love Victorian, like anything Victorian. And I just like this little scene. And it's, uh... It's four by eight, four inches by eight inches. So it's little, it's called Victorian way. Okay. And then I'll be honest. They had these last time I went and I was just, I think I was in too much of a hurry to like really look and think about them. Um, but they had, um, a bunch of lavender and lace patterns. And so this time I was like, you know what? I'm sure some of these are probably like a little hard to find. People might want them. Um, but I don't know enough about lavender and lace to know that like for sure. So I was like, you know, I, some of these could be like, 
I'm, and I'm not trying to like make money or anything, but some of these could be worth nothing essentially, or some of these could be like, you know, unicorns for someone. And I thought, I don't know. I'm, you know what? They're like, they range from a dollar fifty to, <laughs> well, most of them are a dollar fifty, and then a couple of them are three dollars. So I was like, you know, I whatever. I'm just gonna grab them all. I'm just gonna grab them all. So um, I haven't quite decided what I'm gonna do with these because I literally bought them like two hours ago. But um, if anybody out there is like, that is my unicorn. I have been searching high and low for that chart. Then like, let me know. And, um, I don't know, maybe I'll do a giveaway. I might just do stitchy kindness and gift these. I might stitch a couple of these cause I do like some of them. Um, so again, like I said, I don't know enough about lavender and lace to know what is like sought after. I, I know like the three fairies with the light. I can't think of what it's called. It might be called fairy lights. <laughs> I know everybody wants that one but um they didn't have that one and um i was texting amy uh gable stitcher and i was like are there any lavender and lace that like i should be looking for and she she like named a couple and they didn't have them but um she named this one i was like oh they had that one so this is enchanted alphabet oh sorry about the glare i'm not gonna i mean it's the, these patterns are sealed. Like I'm not going to open it up and take it out of the plastic. So this is Enchanted Alphabet, which of course does not look at all like a traditional lavender and lace. Um, but it's, it's really, it's really pretty actually. I love like the font of the alphabet. Um, and then I found Angel of Grace. I don't think I would stitch this one, but it's very pretty. I found, ooh, I really do like this one. I might stitch this one. This is Lady of the Thread, and she is stitching. It looks pretty intense, though. Like, I mean, that looks like a ton of stitching. That border is intense. But it's pretty cool. I found um, Angel of Freedom. Wait the second angel of freedom i guess there was there a first angel of freedom this is the second angel of freedom i won't stitch this but it's really pretty i found heavenly gifts it's three angels i won't stitch this either it's actually really cool. I really do. I like this one, but I won't stitch it, but it's kind of cool. Um, this one, I think I might stitch. I don't know. Something about it is appealing to me. It's called earth angel. I think it's just that she's holding the earth and I think that's kind of cool, but I don't, well, I don't know. I might not stitch that. Um, Oh, here's the first angel of light. Well, there you go. No, the other one was freedom. Hmm. Okay. So that was, I had the second angel of freedom. I already showed you guys. Okay. So I thought this was the first angel of freedom, but it's not. It's the first angel of light. I won't stitch that. It's pretty though. These are all pretty. Um, morning song. It's a mom with two kids and it is like full coverage. That is intense. That's some intense stitching there. Okay. And the last one I found was Nantucket Rose. And I actually do know this one because, um, a couple of people are stitching this. I think Dina half half stitch half stitch or half cross what's her floss tube i think dina's stitching this and i think marbear stitches is stitching this so that's nantucket rose also really a ton of stitching on that thing okay so that was my haul that was that was it okay so that's what i got today 
let's let's look at some stitching let's look at some stitching I finished some things um I finished a stocking from Blackbird look how cute this little thing is can you even can you even that's cute right I finished it with I've got some fuzzies on it I should have lint rolled this um I finished it with just some like homespun and um this is on 32 count raw natural witch elt that really really stiff stuff here's the thing I hate that linen I hate it let me find I've got some of it here somewhere let me find it um I hate this linen it's like it's so it's so stiff it's like sandpaper and I have this huge piece of it and I was like you know what I'm just gonna throw it away because I will never stitch on this I hate it and Amy was like why don't you just keep it and and like maybe you can do an ornament on it because if you're just doing like a really small piece like it might not drive you crazy you can you know be done quickly so like don't throw it away and I was like fine okay like that's not a bad idea I'll keep it for ornaments okay well this is bigger than an ornament but as it turns out I just really really desperately wanted to start these stockings and um I this linen was perfect so I was like you know what I'm just gonna suck it up and I'm gonna use this linen that I hate and I'm just gonna deal with it well turns out because this is so small I couldn't fit it in a like a q-snap or a hoop I mean I could have kind of fit it in a little hoop but um it, it just it wasn't really working that way so I really I, I had to stitch it in hand well actually um I'm kind of obsessed with this linen when you're stitching in hand it was great so I mean I guess this stiffness and the structure um work well for stitching in hand so I actually really enjoyed stitching on this linen in hand for a few days um so I don't know if anybody else out there hates that witch out linen and doesn't know what to do with it maybe try what I tried maybe maybe you'll like it too I liked it as a stitch in hand I really did and look how cute this is <laughs> So this stocking is from the Home for the Holidays Blackbird book. Um, this is the super famous Tis the Season, you know, this the stitch along that everybody and their mother did last year. This beautiful, beautiful, beautiful pattern. It's so pretty. Everybody was stitching it last Christmas. Um, so in this book are five of these adorable little stockings and they're so cute. So this is the one I did um, and I'm going to do all five of them. Here is stocking two. Here is stocking three. Here is stocking four. And here is stocking five. I really like this one. I like all of them. Um, so I think it took me like three days to stitch this. So not bad. So, I mean, I would ideally love to stitch all five of these by Christmas, but I mean, I know myself like that's not going to happen. I mean, but I would love to do that, but I'm not going to, <laughs> I'll just be honest. I'm not going to, I would love to. Um, so the interesting thing about this also is, um, it calls for the stockings call for 32 count R and R fabric but um blackbird designs they say to stitch with one strand over two on 32 count now i know that's intentional like it's supposed to have a thin coverage and kind of have more of a primitive look but i couldn't do it like i cannot i can't go that thin with my coverage so my stocking is different because it's like thick and full like the stitching because I use two strands on 32 count so the colors are more saturated 
and everything's like just a little more stark because um, if you do one strand, you can see it's just like a very thin coverage. It's a prim coverage. It It's pretty cool, but I just knew it would drive me nuts. Downside is this eight floss. I used almost a full skein of two. It calls for two colors, which mine did not have a significant um, variation, so it may be hard to see. Uh, but this is two different colors. One is Weak Dye Works Bake, no, Brick. Weak Dye Works Brick, and one is Gentle Arts Cherry Bark. And mine did not have as much of a difference as the lots that they used so uh, but I do love it I think it turned out so cute I'm very happy with that I also finished um I'm calling this a finish it's really not I'm trying to see if I have the original pattern here so oh here it is okay so fat quarter shop on Friday last Friday August 14th it was world cross stitch day so fat quarter shop released this cute happiness is homemade pattern as a PDF um, which you can still get and they said you know go if you'd like to like download this and join us for world cross stitch day this should be able to be completed in a day Okay, well, two days later, I was like half. I got like half of it, so. I, you know, I got this far, and I was like, I actually kind of like that. I like the look of that. And I thought, you know what? I'm stopping here. So I'm calling that a finish. And I'm going to make it into a cute little pillow. And then my last finish was uh, the Stitch On Me Fantastic Fungi. Oh, I forgot to tell you guys, this is 18 count Ada. And the floss is um, Random Color and Cottons from Stash. So, um, anyway, Fantastic Fungi Stitch Along from Stitch On Me. Um, it was a free stitch along. If you're not familiar with Stitch On Me, it's really an interesting, um, she does an interesting like model. Um, she hosts these stitch alongs through the year. She just did, before this one, she did like a cactus one. Um, if you sign up enough ahead of time, it's free. It's totally free. And then like every couple of days she releases a piece of the pattern. If you don't sign up by a certain date, then you have to pay to get the pattern. And then after the stitch along is over, like you can go to her Etsy and you can buy the whole pattern if you like. But if you want to get it for free, you have to be like in her newsletter and she'll send you, she'll tell you, like she just sent us an email a week ago saying, I'm going to do a Halloween stitch along. If you're interested, like make sure you sign up. And so if you do that right now, it's free. But if you don't do it in time, it's not free. So um, she, uh, the Fantastic Fungi one, it just kind of sounded like, I am I was like, you know, I think I might like that. Um, I really like the look of her cactus one she had done. Um, but I had missed out on that one. So I didn't find out about it until it was like halfway through. So this time I wanted to like get in ahead of the curve so I did and I started the stitch along and I was doing really good for um, like the first week I was like staying somewhat caught up and doing good and then um, it just kind of fell apart and I was like you know she releases a new piece every two days so I was really um, very quickly quite behind and um, so something for whatever reason, I, I pulled it out and was like, you know, I'm just going to at least do a little bit on this. And then I was having so much fun stitching it that I could not put it down. And so I think I worked on this for like five or six days straight and I got completely caught up. And then she released like the last mushroom, like the next day after I caught up. And then um, I stitched that and I finished this. So 
Um, this is on a 40 count. It was picture this plus swamp, but I hated the way it looked. Um, it was like an online order. And when, when I got it, it was just really, really ugly. Um, so I had over dyed this. So this is not swamp. And the fact that I dyed it repeatedly, it like shrunk. So I think it's really smaller than 40 count. And, um, the holes were so, 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 so hard to see on this fabric despite best lighting conditions it's just it it was not great but I think it looks so great on this fabric so here is my fantastic fungi with the called for DMCs and I think it, they just pop on this fabric and I'm just so glad I got to finally use this fabric. I've had it forever. And now it's like I finally used it. It's not hovering over me anymore. So yeah, like I am so happy. I'm so happy with how this turns out. How this turned out. I'm just, I'm just struggling today, guys. Um, so the funny thing is I, this is, I'm still calling this done. This is done in my eyes. But turns out, I just assumed that this mushroom was the last one and we were done. And I took it off the snaps and was like, whoo! Apparently there was one last part that came out. Um, and I just totally missed it. But the last section, I guess, that came out was that you could put these little, like, bubbles in between all the mushrooms. So they're just little, they're just little circles. And I actually don't care for that at all. So I'm leaving it off and calling this done. So I think even if I had been aware of the bubbles, I would have chose not to stitch them. I love this. I love it so much. Just one last look. <laughs> so those are my three finishes since last time. Okay, what else do we have here? We've got whips and we've got haul and they're all mixed together. So we'll just kind of like, we'll do it all together. So the project I've been working on for lunchtime stitching at work is um, the Scarlet House, my gift to thee. And I'm stitching this with my friend Victor. He's on Instagram as flawed sir. He doesn't do floss too. And he gifted me this, like fully kitted up. And so um, it's on a, the fabric is uh, Access Commodities 35 count champagne cork. And because it's 35 count, I'm doing two strands over two and I'm using the called for colors which it only calls for a couple, a, a handful of colors. And um, I am going to be throwing away this Q-snap as soon as the replacement arrives. <laughs> so this isn't a real Q-snap, this is a knockoff. Let's talk about this for a second. I've been meaning to like bring this up. I had never actually had a Q-snap. I had only had like the ones from Michaels, which I assumed were like identical. So, um, I found, I think it was at my craft thrift store, a craft box. I found a Q-snap once and it was a couple of dollars still in the package, brand new. And I was like, well, I already have plenty of these at home, but that's a really good price. Like, why not? I'll, I'll grab it. Life changing. The real Q-snaps are so far superior to what they sell at Michael's. Hobby Lobby and Joann's like treat yourself get a real Q-snap they have um a different grip and they pull your fabric much tauter and they hold better and they're just they are better so this little six by six knockoff Q-snap won't stay tight for anything it just won't so I have a new one on the way and then I'm throwing this one away. But here is my progress. Um, it's 
you know, lunchtime stitching, it's hard because I can only stitch for like 25 or 30 minutes. So I feel like I, you know, I, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere. But like yesterday, I got all of the red done here and here. And I, I finished some of the green and then I did the red and I finally felt like I was getting somewhere yesterday. Like, I feel like we're closing in on a finish on this. So, um, I actually really like the way it's looking on this fabric. I like the coverage of the two strands on 35 count. I think it's looking really good. So I just really have to finish her dress and cape, the snow on the bottom, and then quite a bit of that gold house, which, you know, I've got quite a bit done and I don't have that much left. So I actually might, um, I might pull this out this weekend and just try to bang a finish out instead of keeping it as a lunch project just so I can like, cause I feel like I'm close. I'm close. I could just keep it as a lunch project and finish it at work, but I don't know. I just, I feel like I just want to be done. I just want to be done. Um, let's, let's do some haul. Let's do some haul. I got the cutest needle minder from, um, a shop, an Etsy shop called It's Charm School. I will link it below. I have um, some other needle minders from her, uh, but she showed this one on her Instagram and I just like died. It's, first of all, she hand crafts, these are like resin needle minders. She hand makes every little bit and then hand paints every little bit of these needle minders. So it's a Mickey Mouse head covered in little donuts and candies and treats. And she hand painted and hand craft all of these little things and they're so cute. I hope that's in focus. I really can't tell. So um, I think you can still get these. I don't think they're going to be like not available. Um, I do think sometimes with her stuff, you just have to give her like a week or two because she actually has to make it when you order it. Um, so what else did I get? Oh, okay. So um, Jules, Stitch and Jules on Floss Tube and on Instagram, she's Moonshine Crafter. I'll try to remember to link her below. Um, she's been doing the Schitt's Creek stitch along with me, um, from Paper Crane Stitches, the, um, Simply the Best Sal that we're doing on Instagram. And so she sent me that she had gotten these, um, Schitt's Creek needle minders from Needle Attractions, but I guess it's like a Facebook group that you have to join and I missed out basically. And she's like, well, I actually, um, accidentally like put myself down twice or something like that. I don't know. Anyway, she ended up with two sets. And so I paid her, um, I just PayPal'd her and she sent me the extra set. So I got these Schitt's Creek needle minders. The group is needle attractions. So one is stop acting like a disgruntled pelican. And then one is the town of Schitt's Creek. And then I got this David Rose. I don't know how to fold broken cheese like that. Now, if you don't watch Shit's Creek, you're going, what, right now? And, like, this is not funny or anything. But if you watch Shit's Creek, you know. Like, you know. So, I, I don't know how else to tell you to fold in cheese. Like, you, you fold in the cheese. And stop acting like a disgruntled pelican. Okay, um, and then more. I was on a needle minder, like, bender. Like, for real. And this isn't all of them because some of them are on projects. So, <laughs> when we get to whips, I'll show you. Um, so, I got some needle minders from Grandma Girl Designs on um, Etsy. And the reason being is because somebody, I had posted a picture of a whip and I had a chunk from Goonies needle minder and someone was like, oh my God, where did you get that? So I had to go back through my Etsy purchases because I knew I'd bought it like years ago. 
So I had to go through all these old Etsy purchases and I finally was like, oh, I got it from Grandma Girl Designs on Etsy. Well, then of course, like while I'm there, let me look and see what's new at Grandma Girl Designs. And I needed some things. I needed some things. <laughs> so she had this trio of Beetlejuice needle minders. This one says, I myself am strange and unusual. This is the handbook for the recently deceased. And this one is just Beetlejuice. And then I got another one from her, but it's on a whip. So you'll see it in a second. And it's amazing. I bought a beautiful project bag from Diana. It is Kismet. So she sells project bags like occasionally. She doesn't, it's not like a, she doesn't do it all the time, but like every so often she'll make some project bags and she throws them up on Instagram for sale through that, through, through her Instagram. So um, follow her on Instagram if you want a chance to get one of her bags because they are made really, 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 really beautifully. This bag, I mean, she showed it and I, I like died. So it's this beautiful print and it's got Frida Kahlo. And then on the front, she has the clear vinyl. The inside is this awesome stripe. I just, I love this project bag and I haven't used it yet. I've been waiting. It's so pretty and it's, and it's sewn so well. And I know these things because I've been kind of paying attention to project bags lately because I really want to learn how to do it. And I think it is a lot harder than people think. Um, especially when you get into like, just when you get into the little seams and the mitered corners and the zippers, like I've seen some project bags where like things can just go a little awry. So like overall still nice, but you know, um, this one's a good one. This is a really good one. I also wanted to support my girl, Jen Whistle Stop Stitcher because she she's been releasing all these free patterns that I've stitched, right? So I've got this one right here. I run on feminism, caffeine, and social justice. I stitched um, a Stitcher's Places in the Resistance. It's right here. Um, she offered those for free. And then I'm stitching another one. It's um, not done yet. But she um, opened up an Etsy shop and she's selling these Halloween ornaments, um, a trio. And I think it was all three for $8. And I think they're just so cute. So... There's a cute little pumpkin. There's a black cat. And there's a ghost. They look like they'll be like quick stitches that I could possibly get done for Halloween. I'll link Jen's um, Etsy shop below and her floss too. If you want to go get those and support her. Um, okay, so I had a new start and it was also sort of haul. Um, so there, it was maybe about a year ago, um, Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts started the Stitching Book Club. And they started, um, it's a, a mystery stitch along where you, you know the theme and you know the book going in. Um, you read a classic novel and stitch a cross stitch play, piece related to it at the same time. So they started with um, Pride and Prejudice. I didn't jump in because I already had so many Jane Austen whips and actually a Jane Austen stitch along in progress. So I was like, you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna just hold off. Um, and then they did the Three Musketeers. That one just wasn't appealing to me. And then they did Secret Garden. They just finished up Secret Garden and I, loved that one. I didn't participate, but like I watched it. I watched people stitching it. I loved the book. Um, I watched people stitching it and I watched the, the design unfold and I really regretted that I hadn't jumped in. 
I think I will buy that pattern and stitch it on my own. Um, but I really love the way that design turned out. So she just announced, um, or she had somewhat a few weeks ago announced, um, the next book and pattern will be based on Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. And she even released like a little teaser just so you could kind of get a feel like for what the pattern was going to look like. And I was like, okay, I think I'm going to jump in. I think I'm going to do it. Even though I made Amy like hold me to no more stitch alongs. I told her like, do not let me join another stitch along. Don't let me do it. And then I joined the fantastic fungi stitch along, but I finished it. So I think we're okay there. Um, but yeah, I was like, no, Amy, don't let me do it. Like, no matter what I say, tell me no. And I was like, I want to do this one. And she was like, okay, do it. I want to do it too. So she did not hold me accountable. Um, but here is the teaser of Frankenstein from Sapphire Mountain Handcrafts. Um, it's a gothic novel, so it's going to, I don't know. I don't know what it's going to look like. It's, it only calls for one color. So like whatever ends up being filled in here and along this border, it's all the same color. I mean, you can add fun colors if you'd like, but it's a monochromatic sampler of some type. So I started another stitch along, <laughs> but I am, I'm caught up. I've got the border done. Um, part one releases next Saturday, I think like the 28th or the 29th of August. And then I think she releases a piece every two weeks or so. Um, and it all like will conclude by October. And so we're going to read the novel like as we're stitching. I'm doing mine on 40 count picture this plus murky. And it's super teeny tiny. Like it's so little. Look at it. It's so tiny. Here it is. She did hers on 28 count. Mine's on 40 count. I'm stitching mine with a limited edition gentle arts from Stitchy Box called Forest Deep, which is just absolutely stunning. Whoops. And I knew um, one skein was not gonna be enough. I used exactly half a skein doing the border. So I also grabbed Weeks Dye Works Terrapin out of my stash because I think it's very close and complimentary. So I think I might do the inside of the border in that. I haven't quite decided. I think I might need to see more of the pattern um, because my friend Andrea Stitchy Bookworm is also stitching this and she pulled like five color and cottons and they're like, gray to charcoal to like dusty purple um and she just like she pulled this palette and she's gonna kind of just like integrate the colors throughout and her palette is so gorgeous and now I'm like maybe I should add a color in like I don't know yet I don't know I need to look at stash um need to see if anything really complements this in a way I like. So stay tuned. I might just stick with the dark green. We'll see. We'll see. While we're talking about Frankenstein, I do want to show you, um, for the read along, I grabbed this illustrated, well, it's a graphic novel of Frankenstein. So it's by Gris Grimley and it can, it contains original text from Mary Shelley's novel, but it's not the whole novel. So like it's, it's edited down. So I'm going to actually read the novel at the same time, like on my Kindle. It contains a lot of the text from the novel, 
but not all of it. So I think I'm going to read, like read a chapter of the real book and then come over to my graphic novel and read that chapter or read that far. Basically, I'm going to read two Frankensteins at the same time, just so I can be extra. Why not? Okay, here's a whip. This is Witchy Stitcher Ouija Board. I don't know. I don't know why I got it out. I don't know. It was just like calling to me. And I'm really close to a finish on this, actually, if I just would stick with it. This is 28 Count Monaco that I dyed myself. And um, this stitches up pretty fast, and I don't have that much left. So I really just need to focus on finishing that. Um, Modern Folk Embroidery was having a sale. I don't know if they still are. I want to say maybe not. And I think it was 20% off. And um, I, every, like, every month or two, I go to Etsy and I stalk their site. And for some reason, I've just, like, never pulled the trigger on anything. But, like, I go all the time and, like, look at the patterns and I'm like, I love that, I love that, I love that. So anyway, there was a sale and I was like, you know what? I just need to get a few of these. Like I just need to do it. So I bought, um, forget me not, which is just absolutely stunning. It's a beautiful Quaker. And then I got, um, two Jane Austen themed ones and I've kitted them up. So this one is tenderness of heart and I think it would stitch really fast. It's not that much stitching, I think. I think it's not that much stitching. You know how sometimes I delude myself about these things. And I kitted this up. Um, this is 25 count, uh, what do you call it? Lugana? I'm gonna do it one over one. And this is a color and cotton silk. Diana sent me this silk with this project bag is like a little gift. Um, she threw in this, this color and cotton silk. And I know why she did it because Diana does not do pink, but I think it's gorgeous. And I think that would look so good. And then I got, this is the last one I got from them. This is real comfort. And I kitted this one up too. I had bought some really beautiful black-ish, almost black silk, dinky dye silk from Stitchy Box. This is an exclusive um, color for Stitchy Box. And I was looking for like a nice black Quaker or monochrome sampler. And I think this is it. And I just like it on this fabric. I think it will work well. So I'm kind of like itching to start those. Um, we're almost done with haul, but I'm going to just going to show you a whip. Okay. So I, when Liz Matthews showed this pattern as a new release, this is Quaker pumpkins. I just like screamed out loud. Like I need that. I love it. I love it. So I pre-ordered this from Abby Top Knot Stitcher. She sent it like super duper fast. Um, I got all the called for flosses, which are weak dye works because I mean, this palette is to die for. Like, look at this. So Abby sent it like lightning fast and I started it like the next day. 
I am stitching this on 40 count picture this plus fawn which was one of their newer colors for market it's a neutral with like a hint it just leans a little green at least on 40 count it does I got this needle minder from Abby top knot um and this is how far I got with like I don't know I think that might have been two or three nights of stitching and I love it I it's so fun to stitch the flosses are just so pretty um I think so I had to set this aside for like other commitments but I think I might I might work on this tonight like I'm very anxious to get back to this so this might be might have some more progress on that next time you see me um I bought a new pattern from M Kissa, M Kissa Creations on Etsy. I will link her below. She came out with this new pattern, Life Begins After Coffee. I think it's so cute and it speaks to me, it speaks to my heart. So, and I think it'll stitch like really fast. I think, I don't know. I hope, you know. Sometimes it's just wishful thinking on my end. <laughs> um, okay, so Amy and I, Amy Gable Stitcher and I started um, for the 13th, for Stitch Halloween 13, we started Lila's, Lila's Studio Halloween Quaker. This pattern came out in 2017 and I've loved it since then. But for some reason, I just, I, every time I see it, I like stop and go, ah, oh! and then I just like never pulled the trigger on it. I don't know why. I just always was like, ah, eh, maybe, maybe eventually. Well then like lately a bunch of people have been stitching this on floss tube and I just was like, you know, I, I need it and, and, and I need to start it. I bought all the called for classic color works. And I'm stitching it on 40 count murky, which is the called for fabric. However, this murky to me looks a little like bluish, like a little bit. Mine is more greenish. Maybe? I don't know. I think it looks good though. So here's how far I got that, which took forever. She looks so good though. This is another needle minder from Abby Top Knot. And this is really fun to stitch. And this is three nights of stitching. Did I do that in three nights? Maybe it was four. It might have been four nights. I want to keep working on this, but I really want to work on um, Pumpkin Quakers. So I think what I might do is after this video, because this is what I was like stitching on most recently last night. I think after this video, I might finish this motif. I'm almost done with the outside and then there's some candy corns in the middle. I might like spend an hour and finish that and then go back to Pumpkin Quakers. Okay, last haul, last bit of haul, I think. <laughs> um. I went to an, there's an Etsy shop. I almost, I don't, I kind of don't want to tell you guys about it because, um, she's, she's new, but she has like amazing deals. Um, periodically she has sales. Like her stuff is like a normal price and then she'll be like, everything's 30% off. Um, so I've gotten some like great deals from this, this store. And then like now Amy like stocks the store and then she'll tell me like, oh, she's having a sale. And then I'll go want to make another order. And that's what happened this time. Amy's like, hey, buy you some thread. That's the Etsy shop. Buy you, like the Louisiana Bayou. Buy you some thread. Um, she's like, she's having a sale again. So I went and I got, Amy cleared out all like the good stuff before I got there. I got thread work, primitives, let it snow, which is, a kit comes with the fabric and the floss and it looks like it'll stitch really fast and whoa sorry about the glare I just really like it I, I feel like I was restrained I just got that and then I got two pieces of fabric so this is dames of the needle 40 count red clay mud 
It's a little more red than I thought. I think it's cool. I have no idea what I'm going to stitch on this. But the right project will come along eventually. And then this is just 32 count Wichelt Copper Penny. And I thought it did it. It's not quite the color I thought it would be. I thought maybe I could use this for like model stitching for new designs, which is why I got 32 count. Um, it's not going to work for what I had in mind, but maybe it'll work for something else. We'll see. It's inter It's an interesting color. It's not quite what I thought I was going to get. Okay, my last, my last whip um, is a big one. So for Amy's birthday, which was July 31st, um, she wanted to sell Mirabilia Sleeping Beauty. Thank you, Helen D., who gifted me this unicorn. Um, we did not start it on the 31st because Amy was out of town on vacation, so we started it first week of August. Um, I am stitching mine on 30, no, 28 count. Picture this plus Cyprium. I will say about Cyprium, it's different colors depending on, I think, the lot and maybe the type of fabric. Because when you look this up on Fabric Viewer, viewer it's like marigold yellow. But the piece I got is greenish and reddish. Totally different color than what comes up if you look on like Fabric Viewer. Um, I bought this in person at Picture This Plus in Abilene, Kansas before the country shut down for coronavirus. So, um, oh, before I show you my progress, here is my other needle minder I got from Grandma Girl Designs. This is one of my favorite memes of all time. When I saw that it was a needle minder, I had to have it. Okay, here's how far I got on Sleeping Beauty. This was so fun, so fun to stitch. I, I had to put her down to do our Stitch Halloween 13, but I do wanna get back to her because she is really, really, really fun. And I feel like I got like a lot done for like two or three days of stitching. So I started in the center. So I'm right, like right in here, maybe. It's a lot of stitching. She's, she's a big girl. <laughs> she's a big girl. But I love, I love how she's looking on this fabric. I am going to change her skin tone as well. I haven't quite figured out to what because like because of the fabric I need to make sure it doesn't like clash or look weird. Um, but she's not going to be this white. That's for sure. But I'm not sure yet what I'm going to do with her skin, but I will be making her darker. Um, and the last thing cross stitch related to show is that, um, I was gifted a beautiful, amazing project bag and Sleeping Beauty is living in this project bag right now. So Brie from Brie's Stitching Stuff, I had sent her some stitchy kindness because she stitched one of my designs. Um, Hemlock and Rye Stitchery is the design name for my designs. I'll link it below if anybody wants to go check it out. Um, Brie had stitched one of my designs. And so I sent her like a card and a little, a little something as a thank you. And she then sent me a thank you. <laughs> so she made me this bag and it is absolutely amazing. So this is... This fabric, this designer is Santoro Gorgeous. Um, and he does these beautiful, like ethereal, a little bit creepy, pretty ladies. And she had, I, I don't even know if she knew like how much I love this fabric line, but I do. So here's the back. 
Anyway, th this bag is sewn absolutely beautifully. It's a really good size too. So you can see it's like a tall, um, like most project bags go like a rectangle like this. This is a tall one, which means that um, this kind of pattern fits perfectly upright in this project bag. So um, I am obsessed. I'm obsessed with this project bag. I love it. It's so beautiful and so special that I had to put something beautiful and special in it. And that's why Mirabilia Sleeping Beauty will live in this project bag while I work on her for the next nine million years. <laughs> no, she's actually stitching quickly, but she is big. But I was talking to um, somebody, I think it was Noah. I was talking to my friend Noah recently um, about Mirabilia's because there's just, there's kind of, I think, this misconception that they're like more, I don't know, like that they're harder than they are. I think people are a little intimidated by Mirabilia sometimes. Beading isn't that hard. Like once you, once you get the hang of it, it's, it's really not bad at all. Um, I think the beading throws people off, but I think like we, I don't know, there's just this misconception that Mirabilia's are like difficult, but they're, I've stitched a cup, I've, I've finished one, but I've stitched on several and I find them to be really enjoyable and actually to stitch much faster than you think they will. So I'm just throwing that out there. If you are sitting on a Mirabilia thinking like, oh, it's maybe too like advanced for me. Like it's not, it's not, just do it. Just jump in. Okay. That's, I think that's all my stitching stuff. I'm going to just like look through my notes really quick. Um, I think that's all. So that's all for stitching. I'm going to talk about books now. If you're interested, just stay tuned. If you do not care to hear me chatter about books, I'll see you next time. Thanks for watching. Okay. I read a ton of books. So I'm going to try to go quick because I really read a ton of books. Um, I have been, I set a, a Goodreads challenge for myself for the year. I believe it's 80 books. I wanted to read 80 books this year. And that's because last year I read like 75. So I just wanted to push myself. So I added a couple um, because I read a ton last year. I couldn't see where I could add many more. So I only added five more. So, um, all year I have been behind on my Goodreads challenge, just perpetually behind. <laughs> um, I just, I'm always like one book behind, two books behind. At one point I was five books behind schedule. So Goodreads, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Goodreads is a website where you can track your books that you've read, that you want to read, that you're currently reading. You, um, they do a yearly challenge where you can set a number of books to read. And then as you check in and tell them you've read books, they kind of do the math for you. And they say like, okay, like it's mid year and you've read 40 of your 80 books, you're on track. Or they'll say like, you're ahead, you're a few books ahead or like you're behind. So all year I've been behind. Um, so it was really kind of starting to bother me. So I intentionally picked some short, quick reads to try to catch up. And I did. I am on track for the first time this year. Um, so some of these books are interesting choices, but again, I was trying to knock a few out. So um, I just went and like found shorter books. Um, so this is a young adult contemporary. It's called Save Me Kurt Cobain. It is like 200 and... 59. It's 259 pages. So it's pretty short. Um, so that's why I've, I read this. Um, I didn't like this book. <laughs> I should have, I should have because, um, it's, it's the nostalgia, right? It's about, okay. So the premise is, um, this girl, I think she's 
about 16. Um, her mother disappeared when she was four years old. Um, her mother, like, she remembers her mom telling her, like, I'll be right back, leaving the house, and then just never coming back. So her father has raised her all these years, um, and she just has the, this unanswered trauma of, did my mother abandon me? Did my mother leave? Did she not love me? Um, did something happen to her? Did she die? Like, was she murdered? Was she kidnapped? Did she just run away? Like, that's a lot of trauma for, for a, a, a child to go through. So the book is about um, her thinking that at some point she decides, like as she starts to find out more about her mom's past, she realizes that her mom and dad were not really in love, um, that her mom was possibly going to leave her dad. And then again, that's some of that, like, um, that what happened, like, did she, did she leave her family because she just didn't want them anymore? Um, and her dad is like, no, like she didn't leave you. She loved you. I know she wouldn't leave you. But um, her dad finally admits like she didn't love me anymore. So I don't know. There's just, there's, there's, um, there's some heavy backstory there. So uh, she starts to think maybe he's not my dad. Like my mom wasn't in love with him. Maybe she was having an affair and she decides that her mother was having an affair with Kurt Cobain. So, um, there's, a, she doesn't get there like totally like as randomly as that sounds. She finds evidence that her mom did go to like, uh, Nirvana concerts before Nirvana blew up, um, to like a tiny little club and whatever. And that her mom did have a little bit of correspondence with Kurt Cobain um, so anyway, she decides Kurt Cobain is, could be her dad, but then she takes it a step further and she decides Kurt Cobain isn't dead, um, that he faked his death. And so, yeah, it's, it's a little bit out there. I don't know. I didn't like this book. It was just, I can't necessarily point my finger at it. Um, it's written well enough. Um, and, it, and also it's, it's been like almost a month since I read it. So it's a little bit foggy now. Um, it just, it was just okay for me. I, I guess I shouldn't say I didn't really like it. It was like a m average, just very average for me. Um, there was some nostalgia, like a lot of information about Nirvana <laughs> back in the day. Um, but it just overall just wasn't, it wasn't my, it wasn't my jam. Um, also like, I don't love contemporary young adult in general, so that could have been part of the problem too because I like young adult fantasy. Young adult contemporary is like, look, look, like teenagers are annoying, right? Like who wants to hang out with a 16 or 17 year old girl? Like they are annoying. So this girl is not fun to hang out with for 259 pages. So, um, I don't recommend this book, like whatever, it's fine. It's fine. Don't go find it. So then I found the shortest book I own. <laughs> I read this in one day. I, I just sat down and read it. Um, this is Neil Gaiman, Odd and the Frost Giants. It's like 119 pages, but I actually really enjoyed it. Um, it is, Inspired by traditional Norse mythology, um, there's a, a boy who runs away from home and encounters these animals who are really Norse gods, but they've been cursed. Um, he teams up with them and they go to like break the curse. So there's Loki and who are the other gods? It's been a couple weeks since I read this. Odin, it's Odin and Loki and I forgot the other one. It's on the tip of my tongue. Thor? Yeah. Yeah, 
Thor, Loki, and Odin. So anyway, it was cute. A cute fast read. Um, I think it's a maybe aimed as a child's book. Check it out. It was good. Um, and then a, a series that I've been reading. This is like book seven or eight, maybe. Maybe book nine. This might have been book nine. Um, this is Janine Frost, The Night Huntress Vampire Novels. This one is one grave at a time. I'm not going to get too into this because this is, um, like I said, this is the ninth novel in the series. So anything I say is a spoiler at this point. But um, the series is very good. It's a paranormal adult romance it's they're fun they're easy to read they're all about 350 pages um they're funny they're sarcastic um they're a little sexy like they're just they're fun like candy they're like candy um don't take them seriously <laughs> if you're looking for like some cheesy paranormal romance this is this is a good series so it this is a vampire series um, so the main character is Kat. She was born a half vampire. She becomes a full fledged vampire. That's sort of a spoiler that happens like in book two or three. I don't know. Um, anyway, um, she starts as like a vampire hunter, but then she's just kind of a vampire. So it's about like, you know, it's vampire politics and, you know, there's always some drama with vampires, right? Um, she is essentially like an FBI agent, but not really, but kind of. Um, and so she works for like a special unit that um, solves paranormal crime. And um, in this book, she's hunting down a, a poltergeist, like a ghost that can actually take physical form um, that on All Hallows Eve is strong enough to actually walk the earth and commits murders every Halloween. And so this year she's determined to take him out before he can do that. It was good. I do like that series a lot and I'm going to continue reading it. Um, so a book that I've been reading like all year long, <laughs> I've been doing a reread of Game of Thrones. Um, well, A Song of Ice and Fire, the first book being Game of Thrones. This is the illustrated edition. It's a, it's a big old book. Um, it's mostly just book with occasional, occasional il illustrations. Um, every chapter has a, a black and white illustration to start. And then there are um, periodically uh, color illustrations as well. Um, so I've just wanted to reread this series. I've actually read the series several times. Um, so this is probably my fourth or fifth time reading Game of Thrones. It's still really good. It, it holds up. It, this is a good series. Like despite what the TV show may have done <laughs> to us, um, the writing is still good. The books are still good. Um, things are still a little icky sometimes in this book. Like, um, one thing I really appreciate that the show did was that they aged up all of the children. So the Stark children and Daenerys, um, they're like 13. Daenerys is 13 in this book when she marries Cal Drogo. So like, that's, that's gross. So the show aged them all up and I do appreciate that because that was hard to read. It was. It was hard to read. Um but otherwise, you know, the books are still, you know, written really well, just so much detail, so lush. Um every time I read them, I retain more and more of the locations and the the side characters. Um these books are hard because there are so many characters to try to keep straight in so many places. And, um, George R.R. R. Martin, he, 
he just kind of throws you in like you're supposed to know the history of this world. So like, and you're not, you, you don't, but, um, characters just refer to things that happened in the past and you're like, what, what, who, what are they, like, what are they talking about? <laughs> but as you keep reading, you learn little, a little bit more about this history. And then, um, as you reread this series, you retain more and more. And in that way, it's very reminiscent of Tolkien and Lord of the Rings for me, where every time I read it, which I've read that I've read Lord of the Rings so many times. Every time I read it, I pick up more about like the elven folklore and, and I retain more and it's just enriches the reading experience. So I really enjoyed this reread, but I took it really slow. I would just read like a chapter or two a night and then sometimes I wouldn't read it for two weeks or so and then I'd pick it back up and read a chapter or two and I just like chipped away so I've been reading this since February so um I finally got to where I had like 200 pages left and I was like you know what I could just keep doing this all year long and just reading a chapter or two but like maybe I should just finish this so I just like sat down and in two nights I finished the book so I already knew what I was getting going into that one, but um, it held up. It's still really good. Um, I have the second book. <laughs> I'm looking. Um, so the second uh, novel is A Clash of Kings, and that has also come out as an illustrated edition like this. So I will read that maybe in 2021. I'm hoping this fall, the third novel, which is I have to look so I don't mess it up. A Storm of Swords. I think A Storm of Swords will come out this fall. So um, maybe by the time like I'm caught up with my slow reread, um, the thir third, fourth, and fifth editions, illustrated editions will have published. I think they're doing one a year. So will we ever get the final novel? I don't think so. Okay. I am doing a buddy read with my friend Andrea, Stitchy Bookworm. We're always buddy reading something. And um, she had never read the Six of Crows duology from Leigh Bardugo. Um, but I, I had, and I absolutely loved it, but I wanted to reread it. So um, we, she's reading it for the first time and I'm doing a reread. So we read Six of Crows uh, a couple weeks ago, a month ago. Um, it held up. It was still so good. <laughs> and she loved it too. Um, so then we read the second book, um, which is Crooked Kingdom. So again, this was a reread um, and it was still just as good. And it was fun because it had been about three years since I had read it. And so I... Um, I remembered a lot of things. So I was just sitting there like, Ooh, like, just you wait, just you wait, like what's coming next. But then like, I definitely forgot some of like the finer points of, um, the heist. Um, so yeah, I mean, it was still like super fun because I didn't always know what was going to happen next. Um, and even the stuff I knew was going to happen, like it was still just so enjoyable to read. So, um, Six of Crows is a young adult fantasy. Um, it's a heist novel, but it's so much more than that. Um, Leigh Bardugo writes really, really like nuanced, interesting characters. Everybody has a backstory. Everybody's like just a, a unique, like full bodied person. Um, so there are, are six characters that we're following um, in Six of Crows and they are trying to pull off like an impossible heist. Um, and spoiler, they pull it off. Um, but <laughs> they don't get um, their reward that they're supposed to and they get double crossed. And so in Crooked Kingdom, they're out for revenge. They want their money. They want what was promised. And they want to like get their revenge. They want, I almost said a bad word, but like they, they're out for blood. So, um, 
this is a very satisfying novel because everybody gets their their comeuppance but also um just there there are different love stories there's three love stories um in the in both books and so we get to see those play out more um i love 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 an angsty love story i love an angsty love story so um I think that, I don't want to spoil anything, but um, one of the romances in this novel is like the ultimate slow burn angsty love story. Like the ultimate, ultimate. So um, these books are wildly popular and wildly loved in um, young adult fantasy community. It is extremely rare that I see someone say, I didn't like it. Um, in general, people really love these books. And I think for good reason, they're really, really, really good. <laughs> so if you are at all interested in young adult fantasy and you haven't heard of or read this duology, like I feel like if you're into like the scene of young adult fiction and fantasy, like you are already aware of these novels. Um, but if not, yes, read them. And if you're just intrigued or wanting to dip your toe into young adult fantasy, because you're like, why is this 37 year old woman like super into young adult fantasy? I know it's, it, it sounds a little crazy. Um, but it's a genre that just really speaks to me. Okay. <laughs> like it just really does. And if you are intrigued or interested, this is a great series to check out. I'm just saying just saying. It's definitely one of my all-time faves. Okay. And the last um, thing, you know what? I think that's all I'm going to talk about because I read um, some books on my Kindle, but I didn't like them. And I, and I haven't finished the series. So maybe there's like one book left. I'm going to, I'm going to read it and then maybe I'll just talk about it as a series um, because this is probably plenty long enough. Okay. And I'm hoarse because Colorado is on fire. We have like three different forest fires going. Our air quality is absolute crap. It's like gray and hazy and nasty out and it has been for a couple weeks. And I am literally getting like a frog in my throat because of all like the poor, the poor air quality. So I can't talk anymore. So that's all I have for, for you today. Thank you for watching if you made it this far. I know some of you did because a few of you like have made a point to tell me like I do watch to the end. <laughs> so if you made it this far, thanks for sticking in with me and I will see you next time. Thanks guys. Bye.